financial success. Today it's more about based on really having the long-term vision. So let's get into the information for today's session. So what I want to do first is to kind of just give you guys an awareness. You know, we are trying to recruit people into our business and that's the bottom line. I mean, we can frame it however we want. We can say we're trying to give people an opportunity. We're trying to change people's lives. We're trying to pay it forward. Yes, that's all great. But if we get to the black and white of the activity that we're doing and what the end results should be, we are prospecting people to get them involved in our business. Boom, that's it, right? And whatever it means, whatever meaning we create around that, that's fine. But if we get black and white about it, we're just trying to recruit people, done. So now that we understand we're just recruiting people, we also need to put ourselves in our prospects' shoes and think about how they might feel in the recruiting process. I remember when I was um, just getting started in my business and trying to recruit a bunch of people, it was so difficult. <laughs> I would talk to a bunch of people and nobody would end up signing up in my business for whatever the reason. And I, I didn't really understand why that was the case. I thought that if I just talk to enough people, I'll eventually find the people who see the value in the business. And you know what? I did find a few people, but for the vast majority of people, um, in fact, most of them after I had a conversation with them for whatever the reason, just weren't interested. And so I didn't know what the problem was. I wasn't sure if it was what I was saying. I wasn't sure if it was how I dressed. I thought maybe it's the car I was driving or you know, the fact that I hadn't had success. And I started sitting back and creating all these answers and justifications and stories as to why it wasn't working, why my business wasn't working. And then I went and heard a training. This is back in 2004, 2005 timeframe. It was actually on YouTube, a video just like this. And the gentleman speaking was not a network marketer, but he was a marketer. And what he talked about was the idea of how most people in marketing are like hunters, right? Where they're basically chasing the prey. They're the predator, they're chasing the prey. They're going after their prospects, their customers, the buyers are in pursuit, right? Now, what he said was the dynamic of chasing a prospect or hunting somebody is naturally when you chase someone, what are they gonna do? They're gonna run, they're gonna run away. So he says what we need to learn how to do is create this scenario or create a situation where instead of us being the hunter, where we're hunting our prospects and hunting our customers and all that, where we become the hunted. So how do we become the hunted? The other example he gave was become a fisherman where you get you you have the bait, you have something that your prospects want, you put it out there and you attract the fish, you attract the prospects. And so when he explained that to me, immediately I saw right away where I was messing up. I was messing up because I was coming across as too needy, too desperate and chasing my people, running after my prospects to get them into this incredible opportunity. You know, and I just knew that it was such a good business and I was so excited about it that I didn't really have awareness as to how I was coming across to my prospect. And so I had a conversation one day with um, one of my, my representatives, my, my team members uh, back in the day, and I remember what he said. And this is all after I heard the training, so I had already kind of got that aha moment. And what my um, distributor said, my rep said was, you know, my prospect I brought last week, he said that um, the reason why he wasn't interested, it wasn't because of the business, he said it was because it was you, Max. And I was like, what, what do you mean because of me? He goes, yeah, you were way too pushy, way too aggressive. In fact, you scared him away. You scared him away. I said, what? I scared him away. And of course, I immediately just like downplay. I'm like, ah, he's just whatever. He wasn't interested. He's just a rotten apple. He's just negative. But when my partners told me that, it made me, it, it got to me, right? It literally, I started thinking right there and then. I'm like, man, I scared the person away. And then coupled that with the information I had heard from the training on YouTube, I was like, wow. I started realizing what I was doing was actually scaring prospects away because I was, again, being a hunter. So after having this realization in my business and realizing that what I was doing wasn't working and if I continued doing the same thing, I was gonna to continue to get the same results, I said, you know what, let me take a step back and just reevaluate what I'm actually doing here that's working and not working and clearly nothing was working. So I started looking at the language I was using. I was looking at my posture, looking at everything I was doing to see where was I coming across as desperate, where was I coming across as a hunter? Where was I coming across that could potentially scare my prospects away? And immediately I saw it all. I saw the words I was using. I was seeing how uh, my energy, my tonality was, the type of conversations I was having. I was doing all these things to actually create barriers between me and my prospect rather than create connections and bridges with my prospect. So let me just kind of map out this whole process because if you get clear, 
And what we're trying to do with our prospects, so think about it like this, it all starts right over here where we identify, I'm going to put IP, our prospect, right? So we identify our prospects and we can use warm markets, social media, other people's warm markets. Uh, there's infinite. In fact, if you watch episode two, I talked about how to create 2,000 plus prospects like in 24 to 48 hours. So that's number one. Uh, the second step is, the second step is we want to then do what? We want to peak our prospect. We want to find out if they are open to an opportunity, right? We want to make sure that they are in that mindset, that they have a desire, that they're looking for something. It's kind of like if you invite someone to dinner that's not hungry, it's not going to work. Well, it's the same thing if you're going to in invite someone to see your business. If they're not open, it's probably not going to work. Now, that's step two. Step three is we then need to set the appointment. So I'm going to put S-A for short, and this is what we're going to focus on today. And then once we set the appointment, if they show up, we want to then do what? We want to expose them to the business, right? Expose. And then the final step, I don't think I have enough space here. The final step is we want to then do what? We want to enroll. So I'm going to put E, I'm going to, I'll just spell the word out here. So we want to enroll them into the business. So it's one, two, three, four, five steps. You're going to see an infographic here in a second. Boom, there, there it is. Okay. So just looking at the process here, we want to find prospects. So immediately, that's the first step. Yes, we're in hunt mode because we're looking for the prospects we're looking for, but the dynamic's going to shift because once we find potential people for our business, we then want to approach them. But the key is when we peak these individuals, if you watch our last episode, I talked about jumping through hoops and getting people in this mindset where you are the person that has the value, you are the person that has the opportunity, so people need you, you don't need them, so you need to have that posture. So when you're peaking interest, yes, you ask them a question such as, are you open to making additional income? Do you keep your options open? Uh, you know, something along those lines, but the whole concept is you're not trying to be too aggressive and shove the whole business down their throat in that initial peak. I've seen people who are in that peak state, meaning when they're calling them up and say, or when they meet them in the street or on social media, instead of saying, hey, do you keep your options open? Here's what they end up doing. Hey, I have this incredible business. I think it'll change your life. In fact, this happened the other day to my wife. She got DM'd by somebody in some company called Live. And um, we have obviously no interest in doing that, uh, any type of other MLM or that MLM specifically. And it was so interesting because that person doesn't even know my wife and what she started doing was just kind of took a copy and paste message, sent it to the DM and it went like this. Incredible business, changing lives, doing charity, you can make a lot of money, you can live an inspiring life, you can travel. It was just a bunch of bullshit all the way through. So immediately we looked at it as a joke and that's why we're using it now as a training point. This is not what you want to do. You don't want to be that amateurish in your approach, right? So your peak should be short, but it should also be impactful. And so what we also spoke about in our last episode was how to actually go deep on the personality. The P and the peak stands for what? Personality. Because you want to know who you're talking to. Because if you know the personality of the person you're talking to, okay, I'm just going to put person here. The personality of the person you're talking to, then you can speak to them in a way that will move them to what? The next step. See, the reason why people always end up you know, dropping off right over here after you pick your interest, hey, do you want to make money, is because you're coming at them with a one-size-fits-all approach. It's so impersonal, right? Nobody likes to be sold to, right? People need to feel important, special, and valuable. So how you do that is you personalize the peak. How? By understanding their personality. We spoke about that. Watch the last episode. We talked about shark, urchin, whale, and dolphin. We talked about... Uh, how to uncover their hot buttons by forming them, family, occupation, recreation, motivation, and by uncovering their personality and also their P stands for what? Pain points, pain points, right? So you, you, you the peak, you, within that you find a personality, you're gonna find their pain points, that's gonna make your peak do what? Uh, be effective. You're gonna be able to get that person to do what? Take that next step. Okay, yeah, I'm sure, I'm for sure open, okay? So now what we wanna talk about is once we peak effectively, and if we're doing this correctly, there is no scaring your prospect away. You're not gonna do what that lady did in, in, in the Instagram DM to my wife, where you're coming across as some d desperate salesperson in MLM who's trying to build a pyramid thing, right? That's not what you wanna do. So by utilizing the steps in our last episode, it's gonna absolutely change your posture, your confidence, your flow, your conversation, and give you a posture that's really attractive. And the number one quality you can have to a prospect is value, and that's how you do it, by being a person worth listening to, a person that they want to follow. So now that you've established this, this is the preset, this is the preframe, okay? Now that this part's established, this is the key right here, the next part of the process should just be 
of easy, easy walk in the park. Because if you do everything on the front end correctly, everything else will fall into its proper place. So the next step is setting appointments, right? So when I say your prospects are afraid of you, they're usually afraid of you because of these first two angles right here. You're usually compressing these two into one stage rather than separating it. You're making it impersonal rather than personal, right? You're instead of focusing on that, that prospect's pain points uh, and passions and, and the things they wanna pursue, you're making it all about you, right? And you're coming across as pushy, right? So if you understand the flip side, which I just covered, you're gonna put the ball in your court and you're gonna have a lot of leverage in this conversation. So now the next step is setting the appointment. Setting the appointment, okay? Now there's a couple of things I wanna share with you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase this really quickly. When it comes to setting the appointment, what I want you to understand is what, a real, what, what, is, what is an appointment, right? What actually um, constitute an appointment? Because I think a lot of us here, this is where we drop the ball. I, I want you to become very logical and very um, black and white in how you operate your business, okay? So when it comes to setting an appointment, so by definition, an appointment, and I want you to write notes for yourself, that's how you're gonna retain this information, okay? So by definition, an appointment, okay, is not when someone says, yes, I will meet you on Thursday. Call me and we'll figure out what time and where. That is not an appointment. That is just um, an excuse actually waiting to happen, okay? That is a no waiting to happen. So an appointment, and I want you to write this down, D, okay? Uh, T, P. What is DTP, guys? D stands for the exact day. So it's not gonna be like, oh yeah, over the weekend we'll get together, or oh, later on this week we're gonna get together. When you hear something like that, that is automatically gonna be a no-go, okay? So you need the exact day when it's happening. The next thing is, you need what? The exact time that the meeting's gonna be happening. So it's not gonna be like, oh yeah, let's get together on Thursday and I'll let you know what time, no. Or let's get together on Thursday in the evening time. No, you gotta be specific, okay? And then P stands for what? Place. Now the place is super important because if they tell you, yeah, I'll meet you on Thursday at six o'clock, but we don't know where, guess what? They don't answer, they don't confirm, you don't get a hold of them within that time frame. Even though they give you date and time, but they never give you a place, they can just keep you hanging. Or, and you're going to sit there twiddling your thumbs. So you need to have an exact, detailed DDP set up with your appointment setting. If, you don't, if you're missing one of these three, then it's not an appointment. I want you to get that in your head. If you're missing one of these three components, it is not an appointment. Okay? It is not an appointment. So that's number one. We, whenever you set an appointment, make sure you have these three elements, components in place. Okay, number two. Let's talk about language, okay, when it comes to actually setting an appointment. So I want you to write down this acronym, okay? NPOGS. <laughs> NPOGS, okay? POGS. So what is NPOGS? Let me give you an example. The way I usually set appointments with people, and um, my recruiting process is always like two steps, okay? The first step would be obviously uh, identify who they are, and then I'm going to pick that person, whether it's a social media in person, whatever. So I'm going to pick them. But the peak is an isolated event. I do not set the appointment when I peak them unless it's a hot market prospect and I'm calling them you know, over the phone, then I'll peak them and invite them right there on the spot. But if it's someone I'm meeting as I'm out and about, I'm at a restaurant, I build a, relation, I build a conversation with the bartender or the, or, or the waiter, I'm not gonna sit there and be like, hey, do you, do you keep your options open? Great, let's meet tomorrow for coffee. No, I don't do that, I separate the two. So when it's warm market, hot market relationship, like my cousin, my friend, whatever, my neighbor, Sure, I'll peek and invite them right there. But if it's anybody else outside of an immediate warm market contact, you want to peek as an isolated event, then wait 24 to 48 hours to then follow up and set the appointment. Okay, set the appointment. So you separate the two. So now what happens? When you're setting the appointment, okay, setting the appointment, I'm going to put SA again for short. Here's an example. I'll call John back. Hey, John, listen, just following up from our conversation yesterday. Really quick, by the way, do you have 15 to 20 minutes tomorrow, what are you doing tomorrow for about 15, 20 minutes? So immediately what I'm gonna do is I'll tell them, hey, I'm just calling to reconnect, right? So what I'm really gonna basically do is, hey, I'm just touching base, right? So it's touch base. And then what I'm gonna then do is throw out a test time. I'm gonna throw out a test time. Oh, by the way, and I'm not telling them what it's for or what it's about, I'm just saying, hey, I'm just touching base with you from our conversation yesterday at the restaurant. By the way, I'm actually in a rush, I'm limited on time. What are you doing tomorrow for about 30 minutes around, maybe in the afternoon or evening time? Just throw out a test time. He's probably gonna say, oh, I'm working, I'm tied up, whatever. Say, okay, cool, no problem. That's the whole point. Because by doing that, it's gonna give you insight. 
into his schedule, right? So then what happens? Here's what you're gonna go ahead and do. From there, once you throw it out there, he may be available, may not be available, here's what you're gonna do now. You're gonna time down. <laughs> you're gonna tie down. So how do you time down? See, if you did step two right in the process, which is what, peak interest, but it's not just peaking interest, it's uncovering their personality, their pain points, their problems, their promises, their passions, all those things. If you do that correctly, here's what you end up doing. Hey John, I'm just touching base with you from our conversation yesterday at the restaurant. By the way, I only have a few minutes. I wanted to find out what you were doing tomorrow, afternoon or evening time. Okay, you're tied up, you're working, okay, no problem. So we already know, boom, tomorrow's not gonna work, okay? Then we're gonna tie them down, say hey, Yesterday you mentioned to me that you were really frustrated with your job situation, right? Um, listen, I wanna get together with you and share some information with you. I know you said you were open to making inco uh, additional income, but let's get together for about 30 minutes, okay? And I'm gonna share with you what it is that I do, what it is that we're involved in. Look, I don't know if it's gonna be for you and I don't know if you're gonna be for us, okay? But let's get together and we'll see where we go from there. See how that works? So what, what, what did I just do there in the tie down? So in the tie down, and I'm gonna tie this in in a minute, okay? In, in the tie down, all I really did was I tied in his what? His peace, his passion, right? I tied in his pain, right? I tied in his pain. I, I, I tied in what he wanted, so his hot buttons, right? All that stuff, so his passion and his pain, I tied it in. So I didn't just say, hey, let's get together tomorrow at five o'clock. No, no, that, no one wants to get together with anybody. But I will want to get together with somebody if I know they're gonna show me how to remove my pain and uh, accomplish my passion. You see how that works? So one more time. Hey, John, just touching base with you from our conversation yesterday. Oh, really quick, by the way, what are you doing tomorrow for about 20, 30 minutes? Oh, you're working tomorrow? Ah, okay, got it. Anyways, just wanted to touch base with you. I know from our conversation, you said that you were really frustrated with your job and you were looking for a change and that you know, your passion is like uh, music and producing and all that. Let me ask you a question. If, there was a way, if I could show you a way to make additional income to help you potentially get out of your job and be able to pursue your, your passion in music, would that be something you'd be open to taking a look at? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. So now, so that's the tie down, right? So now what you're gonna then do, you end pog them. <laughs> so now you're gonna say, look, I can't promise or guarantee anything. I don't know if what I do and what my, my business is about is gonna be a fit for you and I don't know if you're gonna be a fit for us, but let's get together, right? Tomorrow you said doesn't work, okay. How about the following day? Let's get together and I'll share with you what it is that I do and we'll see where we go from there. How does that sound to you? Oh, that sounds great, okay, perfect. And then from there you get the exact, what? D uh, day, time, and place, you DDP them. See how that works? So let's do it one more time all the way through and we're gonna wrap this first part up with the appointment setting. So, hey John, just touching base with you from our conversation the other day. Boom, by the way, I'm in a rush. What do you got going on tomorrow uh, for about 15, 20, 30 minutes? Are you available at all in the afternoon? No? Okay, no problem. Listen, just following up from our conversation, I know that you said you're really frustrated with your job and you're looking for a way to be able to generate more income so you can pursue your music. Is that something you're really serious about? Absolutely. Okay, cool, well listen. I can't guarantee or promise you anything, but I want to get together with you tomorrow for about 30 minutes. Um, that way you can see what it is that we do. And you look, I can't promise to guarantee you anything, but after we get the information, go over all the details, we'll see you know, where we go from there. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, awesome. I can do tomorrow at five o'clock. Actually, you said he wasn't available, so you already shift gear. Say, I know you said you were busy tomorrow, but is there any way you can free yourself up? So that's what I do. I don't try to change my schedule. I try to make them change their schedule. Why? Because you always want to be in control. You always want to have the posture in the conversation. Remember jumping through hoops, right? GTH. You want to get your prospect always jumping through hoops to get to the information that's going to help them do what? Remove the pain and bring them the passion. You see how that works? So I'll have them say, hey, great. Is there any way you can make yourself available tomorrow? I know you're working but can you free yourself up for about 30 minutes tomorrow and then I'll see what I can do to pull some strings. If you say no, I absolutely cannot, then I'll say this, okay, cool. So if tomorrow doesn't work, um, the only other time I'll be able to meet with you is what I say. I don't say, well, when can you meet with me? I say, look, the only other time that, that I'll be able to meet with you is gonna be on this day or this day. So then I give them a, an alternative close. I can either meet on um, you know, Friday or I can meet on Monday. What works better for you? Oh, you know, Monday works great. Afternoon or evening, afternoon. Okay, perfect. Why don't we meet right near your restaurant where, where we met? And why do I do that? Why do I wanna do the place of closest vicinity? Because it's a familiarity. Place of familiarity, does what? Brings down the barrier, especially when you're doing cold market recruiting. Especially when you're doing cold market recruiting. The, the, it's very difficult to get people to step out of that comfort zone that you met them in. So you want to kind of keep them in that realm. So it's very easy and convenient for them. And even though, you know, at the end of the day, you're trying to get them to jump through hoops. Remember, it's a new relationship. You're just establishing yourself with that person. So you also need to psychologically play the game, okay? 
So I'll do, do it within the vicinity of where they're working, and in that way, there's really no excuse for them not to show up, right? So then, so that's, that, that's the whole process of set, setting the appointment. But now it doesn't stop here, guys. This is where it just begins, okay? So now that we've got this figured out, let me show you the next step and final step of this whole entire process, okay? Here's how you're gonna guarantee get your prospects to show up, okay? Here's how you're gonna guarantee get your prospects to show up. You're gonna start leveraging the power of omnipresence within your network marketing business, okay? So if you set the appointment, and I encourage you to do it over the phone, because when you do it over the phone, it's just, it has that much more weight, right? Rather than texting or sending an email or whatever. However, once you get them to commit over the phone, so I'm gonna put over phone, so we get them to commit over the phone, which is ideal, the next step that you're gonna do, let's say here's appointment day, so I'm gonna put a, a oh, I'll just fill it out. Appointment day right over here, and let's say that we're like three days before. Okay, so three days before. That's when you set the appointment as an example. Usually I don't even set it out three days, that's too far. Usually I do it within 48 hours. But let's just say you're using three days before. So what you wanna do now, here's what you wanna do. So now you wanna apply the SECT principle. What is the SECT principle, okay? The SECT principle is once you get that yes, I'm there, then immediately you're gonna add them on social media. All, all the channels, Instagram and Facebook, right? And what you're then gonna do is send them a message saying, hey man, it was really great talking to you. Right? Right away. At the same time, what you want to do too, is then you want to send them an email invitation. Appointment invite, with the address already in there. So if you have a cell phone, which I'm assuming all of you have a cell phone, you can set up a Google invite on your calendar that will automatically schedule an event, send them an email that they have to confirm. And it has the location and the day and the time. So now they're getting that email from you, okay? Then from there, the day, the day before, what I'm gonna then do is also call, do a verbal conf uh, confirmation, a verbal call, so I'm gonna call them up again, hey, just wanna touch base with you, you know, for tomorrow, da, da 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 just confirming, and then the final step is a text. So that day of, I'll send them a quick text, hey, I'm, I'm on my way, I'm about 15 minutes out. So that's what, that is the process of SEC. Now why do you wanna do this? Because if you're hitting them on all these different angles, look at what's actually happening. You're building, you're adding fire to the, to, to the relationship, you're building familiarity with yourself and a prospect. You're also hitting them in all these different uh, angles so that way if you call him and he doesn't answer, no problem. You already have him here at the DM, right? You also have him getting email, right? You send him a text, he doesn't respond, all good because you've already hit him three times on the way. So you're not just depending on that one time phone call set in the appointment, no, you're hitting them, you're, you're indoctrinating this person, mentally getting them committed to showing up to the appointment. You see how that works? And then what ends up happening ultimately is now, in addition to that, because you got them on social media, all your content that you have on your social media actually is doing the recruiting for you. If your content's set up the right way. So your content will be like your little foot soldier that's actually in there mentally recruiting your prospect because as he goes through your Instagram and Facebook, he sees all your posts, sees your content, he's like, man, this person's awesome, this person's cool. So he already is inspired by you and that's just gonna make him that much more desirous to do what? Meet with you on appointment day. So I hope this made sense. You know, I just shared with you some pretty awesome insights. I know for a fact, when I learned this stuff, it changed my whole game of recruiting. I, I went from being a, a desperate, chasing uh, network marketer like most of them are. That's why mo network marketers have a bad name. Like, to be honest, I don't even like to tell people I, do, I did network marketing and do network marketing just because everyone's had, had a bad experience with a network marketer. So this is gonna allow you to be different than all the other network marketers where you're not coming across as a desperate, hungry, salesy, pushy, sleazy person, right? No, not at all. You're coming professional, you're coming confident, you're coming um, in a, from a place of power and inspiration, and most importantly, you're coming with a powerful message, right? So if you, if, if you employ all the different strategies I just gave you, DTP, SECT, and NPOGs, right? What does NPOG stand for again? No promises or guarantees. That's what it stands for. I don't know if I left that out or not. So if you apply these principles, DTP, daytime place, SECT, social media, email, call, text, NPOG stand for no promises or guarantees, which is a posture and attitude you have when you're dealing with your prospects. There's no question that your appointment ratio show up, your show up ratio will go up 100%. And I'm gonna encourage you to track it. Don't just sit here and oh, that was awesome. That was so great. I'm just gonna practice on myself and practice on my dog and practice in the mirror. No, 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 forget all that. 
get on the phone tomorrow, start making your, your phone call, set appointments, or start tracking records, tracking how many appointments you set, you know, what the outcomes were, how many showed up, how many didn't show up. Because I promise you, when you start really executing on, on your day-to-day -day activity, like I'm sharing with you right now, you're gonna become a beast in this business. I promise you, network marketing is the easiest, it, well, what's the phrase that we always use? Network marketing is the easiest, big money, but obviously hard work you'll have to do. What that means is, Network marketing is pretty simple. It doesn't take brain science to actually do this business or rocket science to do brain science. It doesn't take rocket science to do this business. All you're really doing is just speaking. You're just saying words, right? Which are all really just scripted. And if you say it consistent enough with enough power and confidence, you'll be able to get results, right? Network marketing is, in fact, a very simple, straightforward business. However, it is hard work, meaning you have to put in the time, you gotta get rejected, you gotta go out there and talk to people, you gotta step out of your comfort zone, and that's all, that's as hard as it's gonna get. I mean, there's a lot worse things you could do with your time and effort and energy, like, I don't know, go pick up garbage for a living, right? Or do construction for a living. There's a lot of hard things you can go out there and do to go make money. I remember the first time I made $10,000 a month in network marketing, I was like, I can't believe it. They paid me 10,000 bucks to just recruit 30 people in a month. That's unbelievable, right? And I knew people who were in the medical field, professionals who couldn't even make a six-figure income, and they had to go to years and years of school and do put in all this time, they still couldn't do it. So I couldn't believe it. When I first got that first check from network marketing of over $10,000, and all I had to do was this, this, and that, it blew my mind. And once I understood that, I said, okay, so all I gotta do is do it again. Boom, did it again, another 10 grand. Did it again, boom, another 10 grand. Did it again, boom, another 15 grand. And then from there, it just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we got to the point where we're like, well, what do we gotta do to make a million dollars? And then boom, made the first million, then the second million, then the third million. And you wanna know what it all boils down to? Keeping it super simple. Focus on the number one thing and the main thing and keeping the main thing the main thing, which is what? Exposures. That's all it is. It's showing massive amounts of people the information. And if you take the trainings I'm giving you guys, every week I'm gonna be delivering one video like this to help you guys through Momentum TV to help you do what? Build massive production, build massive uh, promotions within your organization, meaning people get promoted on your team, and do what? Trigger massive paychecks for you and everybody else. If you have the three Ps in, in motion in your business, you can't help but be in a state of massive, constant, and never-ending momentum. So guys, this is episode five of Momentum TV. I almost forgot, for, forgot. Moving forward, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna change things up a little bit. Moving forward, we're gonna, we're gonna now take our Momentum TV episodes and put them on our YouTube channel. So YouTube channel, Max Knowles' YouTube channel, my channel. Check it out because now we're gonna be doing our Momentum episodes there. Each week we'll be releasing a new training to help our followers, our, commu our community, our viewers get the information they need to really dominate in their network marketing business. So if you haven't already done so guys, make sure you also subscribe at maxknowles.com. If you see this number here too, if you wanna get text alerts with what's going on in real time, text the word beast mode to 323-615-1180. Guys, do me a favor, hit uh, the like button and subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and I, and I promise you, I'm gonna continue to bring you high value content each and, every, each and every week moving forward. Have a great rest of your week, take care. Financial success today is more about based on really having the long-term vision.